All right, so CMHC recently came out with an article saying that they think it's possible that housing starts, the amount of homes that are starting to be constructed, will be down 32% by the end of 2023. That's what I'm talking about in this video. Stick around. I'm that Agent Kelly. I talk about Canadian real estate, my local market of Abbotsford in the Fraser Valley. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and if you wanna chat, you can do so by scrolling down into my description, clicking on the link that I provided, and you can book yourself right into my calendar at a time that's convenient for you. Let's get into this video. All right, so I've got this article here. Housing starts could fall 32% this year via CMHC. All right, so they're saying new home construction in Canada could fall by nearly a third, 32% this year compared to 2022, and may not see a recovery until 2025, according to the Spring Housing Market Outlook 2023 from Canada Mortgage and Housing Corp, CMHC. CMHC says Canada-wide residential starts could fall as low as 176,000 units this year, down from 261,000 in 2022. That is a massive drop-off. So it's base case scenario, which is basically, you know, the bottom scenario, not, not, the, not at the top of the spectrum, but at the bottom, calls for a 19% decrease in starts across the country. So basically, at the very best case, that starts will be down 19%. Provided interest rates remain stable and the economy does not sink into a recession, under this scenario, more than 211,000 new homes would start in 2023. That's the base case. Greater Toronto housing starts will fall in 2023 and then increase in 2024 and 2025. This year, under the high projection, starts in Canada's biggest city will reach 33,500, down from 45,000. <clears> this is interesting. Calgary, for example, is forecasted to see a total of 17,400 starts this year, up about 100 units from 2022. This is due to positive impact from high interprovincial migration from other regions over the forecasted period relatively healthy ownership affordability due to relatively low home prices equals a generally stronger economic outlook in the prairies. And now our market, CMHC's outlook for a sharp decline in BC housing starts this year, however, defies the current construction pace in the province's biggest market. In the first quarter of 2023, 7,300 new homes started in Metro Vancouver, which is up 70% from the same period last year, according to CMHC's own data. Still, CMHC sees Vancouver area starts declining in 2023 with a worst case scenario of just 18,000 units and a best case of 26,000 compared to last year's 26,000. They go on to say that new home starts in 2022 will fall because developers face a shrinking customer base for condominiums in addition to elevated construction and financing costs. So my input here. So first off, I wanna say that the only reason, well, I think the only reason why housing starts are up 70% now in comparison to this time last year is because this time last year, the market was in an all out free fall, basically going down 5% every month. They just did one or two interest rate hikes at this time and we're calling for eight to happen. So market sentiment was pretty much as bad as it has ever been this time last year. So that stat really isn't that shocking to me overall. So what does this mean? This is the way that I like to explain it. And obviously it's not an apples to apples comparison, but the way Vancouver moves is kind of like Bitcoin in a way. Every four years, the Bitcoin halving happens and then the amount of supply getting introduced into the crypto market or the amount of Bitcoin supply getting introduced into the crypto market basically gets cut in half or new supply, I should say. And if demand stays the same, then prices, you know, theoretically just have to get pushed up uh, quite substantially from that point onwards, because if supply or new supply is getting cut in half, but demand stays the same, then, you know, there's twice as many people fighting over the same product, basically, in, in theory. Not exactly, but you get what I'm trying to say. Well, in Vancouver here, we typically trade in four year cycles. Uh, not exactly, but for the most part, if you go back and look at minimum the last 25 years, this has pretty much happened down to a T. So we, you know, we trade upwards for three years and then the last year of those three years is usually insane and we go up, you know, 
catas uh, parabolically in that last year of those three years, and then we sell off for a year and the cycle repeats. And during that one year in the cycle where we are trading down, I like to compare to the Bitcoin halving because this is exactly when all of the developers stop building. And they stop building for a multitude of reasons, usually in a sell-off, interest rates are going up or they've introduced a bunch of taxes or there's just nobody willing to pay the current prices that are being offered in the market anymore, right? So usually if the price of real estate comes down, well, you know, the cost of labor and goods and everything else has gone up during that time period. So it becomes unprofitable for developers to build or their carrying costs get higher or whatever it may be, they stop building because it just doesn't make sense on a pro forma anymore. So if history rings true again, we are in year one of three of prices creeping up and come 2025, 2026, when all of the projects that should have been getting built right now with a two year long completion, they all should have been getting completed in 2025, which would have added the supply to the market. But now that none of these homes are being built in two years when they should have been built, we're gonna have a massive supply constraint and that's what causes that parabolic rise in prices in the last year of that four year cycle. Pretty much exactly what happens in Bitcoin for the most part. I know it seems uh, unreasonable that I would compare Vancouver real estate to Bitcoin or probably not healthy either, but there are quite a few similarities. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm just, I don't know, giving you guys a cool analogy for it, I guess. I mean, it is kind of cool that Bitcoin and Vancouver kind of line up with some similarities, but uh, I think that this has been what has happened. So it wouldn't be unreasonable for it to happen again. And just from a fundamental standpoint, if we're bringing a million people into the country right now, not actually, I think it's like 650,000 or something like that, but we're only gonna build 163,000 homes or whatever this thing said at 2.2 people per household, we're building 320,000 homes. We're gonna be short 330,000 homes or something like that. Not exactly, I know none of this exact, uh, so sorry, you know, if you're looking for exact numbers, I'm not, I'm not a data guy, I just like to, you know, explain concepts in layman, layman's terms so that everybody can understand, but basically, fundamentally speaking, there's not going to be enough supply and there's way more demand coming into the country. So I find it hard to believe that prices are going to go lower and I think it is realistic that we do have another four year cycle where the prices are substantially higher three years from now um, than what they are now. So if you like this video, like this video, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I'm that Agent Kelly and I'm making moves to move you. Peace.